Hi, so I want to talk to you about a really interesting problem that I found right here. So here's the language L, which is A to the N, B to the N, C to the N, where M and N are not related necessarily, but uh, M is just something at least one and N is at least one. And it's pretty clear to see that, uh, that this thing is not regular because of this segment of B's and C's. It's like zero to the N, one to the N, but it's B's and C's. So L is uh, very clearly not regular. But the problem is we can't prove that it's not regular using the normal pumping lemma. And why is that? So we have to, if we were going to use the pumping lemma, what we would do is we would have to pick a string that's in the language L and has length at least uh, N or P or whatever we're calling it, the pumping length. So let's pick a string. So we, no matter what we do, we have to pick something with some number of A's at the beginning, obviously. And then we have to pick some number of B's and then some number of C's. Oops, not N, C. And we notice that the number of A's here, according to the definition of the language, is not correlated with the number of B's and C's here. So no matter what happens, Let's suppose that we had our decomposition x, y, and z, where x is the empty string, y is a single a, and z is the rest of the string. Then what will happen is, uh, no matter what we do, whether we pump up or down, uh, we will change the number of a's, but we will not change the number of b's and c's. And the only real requirement of being in this language is that we have the same number of b's and c's. And so we, this, no matter, no matter what string you pick, it must be of this form because you must pick at least one A according to the definition. So this decomposition says that you will always stay in the language. And so the pumping lemma cannot ever be used on this language. Fortunately, there's a more generalized version of the pumping lemma that is, that is more suited to this. So I want to, uh, have you re uh, re sorry remember what what the proof of the pumping lemma was like so we had this uh, start say at the beginning we had some number of transitions and then we had a number of transitions that went back to a state that repeated and then we went to a final state so this was in a hypothetical dfa for the thing well i guess really for any dfa this is true and what we saw that if we broke this string up into pieces x, y, and z, then what we saw was that if this thing had n states, that the length of x, y was at most n, because the repetition must occur within the first n characters. And so the fact that x, y has length at most n right here, this is kind of a problem in this scenario because it forces the y part to be pumped near the beginning and we found a decomposition that allowed us to get out. Whereas if we instead allowed y to pump over here, then that is uh, that's better because that allows us to pump out of the language by being only in one of the sections. So I want to talk about something which I call the generalized pumping lemma. So this is the generalized pumping lemma. And, and how is this proved? Well, we notice that within the first n characters there is, or p characters or however I called it, there was a repeating state, uh, no matter what, because of the pigeonhole principle. But the same logic is true if we shift the p length substring to be anywhere in, in the entire string x, y, z. So if we pump anywhere in the whole string, we will get a repetition no matter what. It may be the same repetition as a different uh, slice of it, but it's there's still a repetition guaranteed to occur. So here's what the pumping, the generalized pumping lemma says. And I'll actually prove it with a picture. So we're going to have a slightly bigger machine. And here's the repeating state. And I'm going to introduce two other states along the way. So, uh, and here's what's going to happen. So we're going to have the first one go to the second, the second go to the third. The third is the repeating state. Third goes to the fourth, and the fourth goes to the fifth. And so what I'm going to call is, each of the pieces is U, V, 
uh, let's see, what should I call it? A UV uh, X, Y, and Z. Let's, let's just call it that. A lot of different textbooks use different notation here, but I, this is what I'm going to use. So uh, what we have is that the this whole thing right here, or or I guess I I guess this part right here, but uh, yeah. So we, what we can notice here is that the length of v x, the these two pieces right here, it, it involves some repetition. So that part can be squeezed to within p characters. So this is at most p characters, but. Uh, we can actually guarantee that this must occur for any p length substring of the entire thing. So that means that we can write any string that has length at least p into this uh, into this decomposition where we have something at the beginning, something at the end. They could be really anything, but then we have this repeating part somewhere in the middle. And the usual pumping lemma comes from setting u and z both to be the empty string, which is meaning that this state is that final state and this second state is the first one. So the way that we can write this then is every way to write that, or that input string w uh, such that w is an l, and length of w is at least p. So that's exactly the same as the normal pumping lemma, nothing different. Uh, we can write it, write, we can write w equals u, v, x, y, z, uh, such that. And then now we have the important condition that the length of, of v, x right here so, uh, so the first one is vx is, has length at most p. And the second condition is that the middle piece, just like in the usual pumping lemma, needs to have at least one character. So that means that the x part has at least one character. And then the third condition is we can repeat the, the x piece as many times as we want. So u, v, x to the i, y z is in l for all i at least zero and so that is a more general version of the pumping lemma now the general version can be used to prove that this original language is not regular because it says that every way there every possible way to break this string up into those five pieces uh can be pumped within the language well the first one doesn't, uh, it doesn't allow us to pump out of the language, so it's okay. But if we pump over here, uh, we can find that one decomposition where the, the, the V and the X part are in this set of Bs right here. And then we can pump out of the language just like we would with 0 to the N, 1 to the N. And so that allows us to show that this language is not regular. What would be really interesting is to know, are there certain languages that can't be shown to be not regular using the generalized pumping lemma. And it turns out that there are, but I want you to actually think about uh, how would you actually find such a language that has that property. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about the generalized pumping lemma down into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, I'll see you next time.